We want to build the number one international baseball league. Oh, what a catch! Oh, what a catch! Like I said, I feel blessed. The pitcher grabbed by Schlitter goes through the force of the plate. Ground ball double ball play, game, game wow. over. Wow. wow. This is a money ball, a gentlemen. Ball. And this yeah. oh, money ball. Welcome back to the Baseball United podcast, the premier voice of international baseball. I'm your host, Liam Skiffington. Our guest this week is a former former MLB All-Star with extensive international playing experience from MLB to the Dominican Republic, Mexico, China, and even Dubai. He showcases talents on stages around the world. Now he's taking on a new challenge as a key figure in the global expansion of our sport, it's a privilege to introduce one of our player owners here at Baseball United, Jair Jurgens. JJ, we're absolutely pumped to have you with us today. Appreciate you taking the time, my man. It's great to see you again. How's everything been going? Uh, Liam, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Keep doing your job, man. He's doing a really good job promoting this league, promoting Baseball United. We appreciate it. And uh, everything's doing good, man. Just uh, I'm excited for the new challenges coming up with Baseball United, and we're here to work. So what have you been up to since I last saw you in November? Um, actually, like I was in uh, Mexico last week. Um, I just was, I wasn't ready like I, uh, I thought I was. And um, the GM from the team was really honest with me from the beginning. And he told me, if uh, we're going to give you a try, but if you are not ready mid, uh, mid-season form, we, if we don't have the room to let you get in shape, then uh, um, I wasn't that um, lucky. I uh, wasn't ready like I uh, like uh, I thought so. Then um, they decided to let me go, and I'm just like back on the grind, and I'm waiting for another opportunity. The ups and downs of baseball, am I right, Jair? How yeah. do you, over your career you've played professionally? What close to twenty years now, right? Yes, uh, I've been professional since I'm seventeen, and I'm forty eight now. Then um, I'm getting to the twenty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, wow. it, it's a grind. It's a grind for sure. You gotta love this game for to do it this long. Absolutely. How do you deal with all of the ups and downs that come with loving this sport as much as someone like you or myself does? Ah, uh, man, you say the key word love, man. Um, if, if if you don't love this game, um, you will give up. And um, I, I grew up watching my big brother play, um, hear all the story my dad used to tell me, and I just fell in love with this game. And that love keep pushing me to like go through all of my challenges. Um, if everybody know I have five surgeries, then um, I just love this game. I keep pushing my body to the limit. Um, like, you know, the the lifespan of a professional athlete is so short. Then when your body decides you can't do it anymore, you can't do it anymore, then I, I will push my body to the limit, tell my body to give up on me. So you mentioned grow, uh, growing up, you would watch your brother play. You grew yeah. up in Curacao. Tell me, what was it like and how did you get started in baseball? over there and like you said like i said uh i grew up every weekend on on the field you know um my brother play my cousin uh were coaches my dad had played and before he become a dad then uh, i was uh brought up uh on the baseball field um every friday to sunday depends what time my brother play i will be there by nine o'clock eight o'clock in the morning and stay there till six then um uh, I grew up loving it. Um, then a couple of uh, our legends from Pure, so like Andrew, uh, opened the door for us, um, like doing all the stuff he did in the in the World Series. And um, like I said, it's uh, it's easy to fall in love with this game. You know what I mean? It's the difficulty of the game makes it so special. So your dad, your brother. Andrew Jones, they all sound like they were major influences on you growing up. Were, was there anyone else, Jair, that really influenced you in the way you play and the way you go about life off the field? Um, you know, I'm I'm blessed. I have like really good coaches, um, really good coaches. And my main thing is my dad, man. My dad um was my is my idol, my hero. Um, I think till this day, even him being passed away for 10 years. Like I remember everything he teach me, he taught me at, at four or five. And just, I tried to, um, even if he's not here, I'm trying to make him proud. 
Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So Jair, you had a pretty standout career with the Atlanta Braves. That's where you got your first all-star selection. What are some of your favorite memories from your time in MLB, whether it was with the Braves, Baltimore, uh, Colorado, any, anywhere you played? Um, this, this, how oh, the, oof. I need to say like, um, here and there chills gets to you. Like, especially for me, I'm talking about my case. Sometimes I will be sitting in 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 the dugout there and say like wow, like I'm living a, 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 a my childhood dream. You know, I'm living a lot of people's dream, and I really I always appreciated that part when uh, I was able to show up to the stadium, um, face like uh, face future Hall of Famers, um, just be part of uh, of a family. You know, what I mean, uh, when you play professional uh, sports your teammates become more your family than your own family, then that 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 feeling is hard to replace sometimes, just being in, in, in the clubhouse, in the brotherhood, and having 25, 26 guys pushing for the same goal. And um, I think I cherish that. I think every day in the big leagues for me was uh, was amazing, amazing dream come true, and I think I cherish that, that till now. A lot of guys that get up to the big leagues, Jair, they almost get used to that big league, big league lifestyle. Mm. At any point in your career, do you remember kind of um, losing perspective of that? Um, what you said in there is like is true. It's really easy to lose that. Um, I remember my first year uh, after I got traded from Detroit. Um, at first year in big leagues. Um, I still had a lot of coaches and friends uh, who was with Detroit, and I was still living in Florida. And I drove down to the um, Detroit campus and say hi to some of the coaches. And the first thing they told me that do, do not get comfortable, do not get comfortable. Then, uh, like I say, I was lucky to have great coaches, great people around me that kept me humble. And my dad always told me like. Fame doesn't pay your bills, then um, I try to be as humble as possible. What would you say, Jair, of your extensive career in MLB? What would you say was your biggest challenge? Biggest challenge? Oof. Um, I think um, I talked to a lot of my ex teammates. Um, I wish um, back in my time, um, health. Um, physical look, um, diet and everything was like so, so important. Back in the days, my time, like if you can go out there and perform, they really didn't, they mess with you. You know, now I think every team has a better plan how to keep the, the main players, main stars on the field. And back in my days, um, we just was like, um, Trying to invent stuff on our own, um, try to stay healthy as much as possible. But now I think everybody has a better plan. Um, teams are more willing to help these days. Uh, back in the days, you go in the training room and they say, "Like, what you doing in here?" You know what I mean? And um, that I think that's the I think it was my challenge. Um, try to um, I didn't have if I need to look back, I didn't have the right. Oh, uh, in a way, I didn't take care of my body like I was supposed to be take care of it. Mm -hmm. So shifting gears a little bit now, Jair, mm -hmm. into your international experience. In 2017 yeah. and in 2023, you represented the Netherlands in the World Baseball Classic. Tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about that experience and what it meant to you to represent the Netherlands. Um, first of all, the first one, um, the first one was uh, eye-opening for me. Um, First time being in a five star hotel, um, go on the road trip, not having a roommate, you know, mm -hmm. having a, a king bed for yourself. Um, that really like um, being a part of the first um, WBC opened my eyes, really like pushed me to become a big leaguer, live that lifestyle. And second, um, in Curacao at that moment, uh, being a professional baseball player was the number one goal. And the second number goal was be part of the Netherlands um, national team. Um, I saw a lot of guys um, who helped me through my career when I, I just signed. 
uh, helped me with uh, the lifestyle of being a professional athlete uh, was part of it. And just being able to be on the field with them, sharing the same uniform, same uh, defend on one of our flags uh, was an honor. And uh, it's just something like uh, I cherish till this day. Um, I think the Netherlands, for us, especially for us, if I'm curious, Aruba, Bonaire, St. Martin, like all the Netherlands kingdom, um, it's a chance for us to, especially when you become uh, a free agent, it's, it gives you a chance to keep playing the high level tournaments keep you putting in front of scouts. And like, uh, I got a, my um, my job to go to Taiwan because of the Netherlands. You know what I mean? That's why like, I, I, I have all the respect for that organization, for that program. And sometimes I like to be part of it. Um, last uh, last year I was part of the coaching staff um, as a bullpen coach trying to help the young kids now. And uh, it's, it's, it's an honor just to be a part of it. How would you say that playing in a tournament like the WBC compares to playing in the MLB in terms of atmosphere and competition? For example, you played in the MLB All-Star game. What, how does that compare? And uh, it, It's not even close. It's not even close. Uh, the reason why is um, when you're playing for your professional team, anyway, you represent the organization and your last name. But when you're playing for your, for your flag, in a way, you represent all the countries, all the island. And in a way, you're, you're representing your family. Um, I think I always told everybody, I think for me it was harder to put Curacao or put Netherlands on my chest than having the, the Braves or the Orioles or the Rockies or whatever team I play for. Because, you know, this uh, for me, I think especially for Curacao, um, every time I had a chance to put Curacao on the map or or even to a broadcast, it, it, it was a, a honor and it's something that I uh, always try to like represent the best I can. In your view, Jair, how do well, international tournaments like um, the WBC, like the Caribbean series, contribute to the growth of baseball globally? Oh, um, I think after the first baseball classic, um, or even during the first baseball classic, you saw South, uh, South Africa come over the team you never heard of. Australia, you only heard of Australia in like um, amateur um, amateur tournaments or little leagues. Then having this major, major, major tournament, you can see all the countries, France, like being part of the European um, um, organization or federation, you can see with baseball classic, France, Sweden, Ukraine, like all these small like countries in, in Europe are trying to come with a baseball baseball program and uh, being part for the first time last year in the European tournament, you can see like there's a lot for baseball in Europe too. It's just soccer is so big over there that it's, it's getting covered, but they love baseball. They love baseball over there and in, in they are willing to like spend the money and just seeing a little bit of the European uh, baseball life. They're willing to spend the money to uh, make the program bigger and better. Mm -hmm. So what other changes, Jair, have you noticed in the international baseball scene over the years since you started playing? Uh, more more um, players from other countries coming on, not only from Dominica, Venezuela, Puerto Rico. Now it's more Curacao players getting chances. Um, now you've seen like um, Colombia is getting big now too. Nicaragua is getting big. Like just like the kid last year had a, a chance to face three All Stars, strike them out, and got a job from it. Now that's the thing. Like international um, tournaments brings that a tryout or a country that does not. It's now we really rich in baseball players that not attract um, professional scouts to go see them. It's hard for like for them to get discovered. But with this kind of tournament, with Baseball United Classic, all like Latin American tournament, European tournaments, like it brings attention to countries that don't get attention in baseball. 
Earlier in the show, Jair, you mentioned yeah. how um, Andrew Jones kind of opened the door for your generation of uh, Curacao and players. Mm. What does it mean to you to kind of be that liaison for the next generation with your success in the major league level? Man, um, it's an honor. It's an honor. Um, like I said, I try to be the best role model as possible I can be. Um, I try to represent my flag as best as possible I can I can do. I, and and um, you know, a lot of those guys know that um, if they need somebody to talk to, I'm always willing and here for them. Um, I know um, baseball is so stressful that people <laughs> try to be in their own world. And uh, I don't like to send text messages out there and like, see how you're doing. I just, uh, um, I make sure like I keep my eyes on all the guys and, um, you know, here and there I send a text message, congratulations, good job, whatever. Uh, make sure like they know, like I, I, I'm, I'm, I have my eyes on them, then I'm supporting them. So shifting gears again, mm. you pitched in the inaugural all-star yeah. game in Dubai last year, all-star showcase for baseball <laughs> United. What was that experience like for you? Oh, uh, I think um I think baseball baseball is hard to choose one special moment in it you know um being part of something bigger now it's not because it's I'm being an uh, ambassador like I feel like I'm being an ambassador that open doors for all those kids who live in that region um and the response I got from the fans, like, after I, I finished pitching, um, some of them was, like, old uh, Braves fans and saying, thank you. Thank you for bringing the game here. Like, we need you guys here. It, it's, I think, made them special. And having my family there. And and another thing was really special. I tell Cash, I tell John, I tell Eddie. Let's just, the group of guys they picked, from both sides of the, the, the both teams, like that day you felt, I felt something I never felt before in my life. Everybody was pushing for this game to be a show. And, and it, it was special, like it's special, the fireworks, the introduction, just the feel, the environment, just, and the group of guys, it was the best. How would, so at the risk of sounding redundant, Jair, how yeah. did this tournament in Dubai compare to any of your other experiences, whether it was the WBC, the MLB All-Star Game, or anywhere else you've played? I would say, like, it's, 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 it's up there because I wasn't playing for me. You know what I mean? I was playing mm -hmm. for all those kids in that region. And that maybe my performer or Bertola's performer or anybody performing that day give those kids – a uh, 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 a feeling that I want to chase this. I want to be part of this league. I want to be part of major league. I, you know, it just it just like just like I saw Andrew just hitting the two home runs. Say like I can do it. Like I want to be part of like a uh, uh, that person for one kid. You know what I mean? I want to be just like oh I like this the way this guy perform. I want to be him. I want to try to do the same thing he does. It, that's the like I say. Um, what we did that night, the two nights, it's like, it's way above everything we achieve in our career, you know? Because now we're being, we're passing the game along to a, a region that baseball is not really like that, that, that brand out, that famous, you know what I mean? And um, to have, like I said, the reaction from the kids, from the fans, from grown ups. Say the thank you. We need this. Um, this I think, like I said, it, it, it was a special night and something like I think I gotta share it for the rest of my life. Was that reaction from the fans and the parents the most surprising thing to you during that tournament? It wasn't surprising. It just made it clear that we're doing something special. You know what I mean? Um, I think every sport event's gonna like you gotta find you gotta find um fans from it but just the way they react and they were so thankful that we even thought of bringing the game over there i think um 
it shows us we're doing the right the right things and we got to keep pushing it to make that game bigger over there for sure so this past february jair it was announced yeah. that you actually became one of our co-owners so yes c congratulations to you on I that but i'm curious to know what motivated you to transition from player to co-owner um as the first day I had, I had a conversation with John, um, I was so, uh, I was so just, um, if you, like, I'm a soccer fan, I pay attention to soccer and see how Saudi Arabia League is becoming big and see how the fans are behind it. And playing, like, in in Japan, Korea, in, in Taiwan, in all in the baseball classic tournaments, you can see the fans beyond the United States are true fan. They are a, 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 a player fan. They're not the team only team fan. They're a player fan, and um, just um, having all those experience, it was an easy decision. I was so loud from two seconds talking to John about it. Um, even I was even talking about um, becoming a a, a co owner at that time. It just the possibility and the the special thing we can do for their region it made it easy. And um, when you grow up, and I need to say thank to baseball for everything I have in my life or achieve in my life. Like if I can just one per, one kid make it live his dream, like everything we're doing right now is gonna. It's going to be good. It's going to be, we, we doing our purpose. And that's what I want to do. It was also announced that Andrelton Simmons and Didi Gregoris, both also hailing from the Netherlands, were, mm -hmm. um, became part of the ownership group as well. What does that mean to you? And what do you think of that, the implications that has on baseball in the Netherlands, that the three of you mm -hmm. are now co-owners and also players in this brand new league? Um. We um if like I did this with a more a lot of reason, right? Helping kids in their region, but to open the door for kids from Curacao that not that get signed and get released, they have a chance to still prove themselves that they can play in a high level of competition. And two, um the Dutch team right now is going to uh a dry, dry spell right now with talent, and um, we. Uh, I want to maybe um, help, help those kids is like on the bridge to, like, is to be a professional and not be a professional to see if they can really like be part of this lifestyle. Um, I, the first thing I talked was with the the Dutch manager. You know, um, I really would want to like bring some Dutch kids over there to, to like, you know, to live their lifestyle and um, challenge yourself, you know what I mean? Challenge yourself, um, knowing that the Dutch league, the, the, again, the professional league in, in Holland is not doing so well. A lot of talents are, are getting signed early or they're going to college. Then the guys who are staying over there are not really seeing competition. And um, they are the main main players for the the national team. And if we want to compete in the last uh, coming up, WBC and stuff like that, we gotta uh, have these kids play in a higher, higher level. And that that made it not a a, a path for me to be part of this, to be a, a co owner to help to help um, kids from Curacao, Aruba, and like you know keep um, producing more talent from back home. Mm -hmm. It's, mm hmm. So our CEO and co-founder Cash Shake often talks yeah. about Jair, how yeah. what we're doing is insane. It's absolutely crazy. Bringing a new mm -hmm. professional baseball league to the Middle East is insane. Mm -hmm. He also talks a lot about how this organization from top to bottom mm -hmm. is operated like an elite sports team. Mm -hmm. Can you expand upon that a little bit and kind of your experience with the uh, Baseball United leadership? Um, the first, um, the, uh, when we were doing the draft, um, I heard cash talk and, um, is you can hear in his voice, the, the sacrifice he's doing the work, the behind the scenes, a lot of people don't see he's doing 
And um, that, that made it a little bit easier for me to be part of this too. But um, because it's run by X players, we understand what we need to do or what we need to to achieve for this league to be successful. And with Cash knowing how to maneuver in these elite environments, it makes it easier for us to be able to share information for him. And the way he turns her around and make things happen, like he he he, he got a gift. You know, he got a gift because remember we bring in a sport that's not really known over there. Challenging their own sport that's cricket. I mean, it's like, it's almost the same thing, but actually you throw in overhand, you have four bases. Um, it is, it's a challenge. It's just for them to be able to see the, the magic of this sport. You know what I mean? Um, like, you know, what's going on in the game. People, they're trying to make this game more excited, but, um, but sometimes you can have that, you can say the the that 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 moment that the game is just like rolling around and stuff like that. And it's hard to sell baseball sometimes when in cricket is everything is like excitement. You know, it's one pitch is like home run. I don't even know how this like what kind of rules they have in cricket, but everything is 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 quick excitement. And baseball sometimes they got that that moment. Then for for us to sell this. And um, for all the players to put the input to have cash, try to bring it to the people to make this happen, um, you know, it's hard and but it's special too, because it comes from baseball players, and and we're trying to change mindset of a region that never saw a game like this before. Have you ever been part of an organization that operates like this, Jair? No, no. Like, I think that night after the first game and that night I told John that um, it, what I felt that first night, like I, I got to re repeat myself, that everybody was pushing for each other. I never felt it in my career. Not even, not even playing for the national team. It's like, I don't know, it's like, because we all know what was at stake, that if we didn't have a good performance in those two games, especially the first game, you know, all the effort that Cash is doing and all Baseball United operation is doing, my felt true, then have that energy on the field and having everybody pushing, like, their organization is, 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 is way different. Um, the, the love for each other, respect for each other is above art and everything I've been part of it. Why do you think Jair and I was all, obviously I was over in Dubai yeah. last November, yeah. uh, doing content yeah. with all you guys and it was palpable. You could feel from even the content team to the players, to yes. everyone in the and organization, everybody. Everybody was bought in. And like you said, yes. they knew what was at stake. But mm -hmm. how do you think – it's crazy to me that – because you can take – let's say there's 100 people involved. You can yeah. take 100 people and you can't get them to agree to a consensus on anything. 100 people mm -hmm. from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that this is working the way it is? Oof. Yeah, I think um, I think it just – it's because we is run by baseball players, man. Um, <laughs> I think it, it, I, I think for me, I think that that's the that's the key, that's the glue, because we know the inside out. Um, I think everybody been part uh, a time in a career that they need to hear something that we didn't they want to hear, and um, and having all the experience coming together. Like you have them like from Hall of Famer, from All Star players, like it's it's like it's all type of guys who've been there, not been there, of being successful in Japan and Korea. It's I don't know. It's like you can't find one word to describe this group, man. It's like you know it. It's like 
it's it's like everybody is just like a glue, man. It, everybody is like you know, like ants, like everybody following like the leader. But it's really is no leader. It's multiple leaders, and everybody's like choosing what's working this at uh, this moment, and we follow that person, and this, oh, we follow this person. And I think um, that's what make the baseball united so special. You know, we're not we're not trying to uh, one person stand out. It's just we're trying to make this work, and we're trying to make dreams come true. And uh, like I said, when you achieve everything you want to achieve in the sport that you grew up with, loving. And now you have the chance to give that gift to a kid who never thought he's gonna get that uh, chance. You know what I mean? It, it, it's easy. It's easy to fall in line and see the big picture, see the dream, and and try try to be a part of history. It is crazy to me, Jair, that this ownership group is comprised of. Hall of Famers, All Stars, yeah. Gold Glove Award winners—you name it. This someone on this ownership group has done it, and yeah. it seems to me. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because you would know mm -hmm. far better than me. It seems mm -hmm. to me that, and you kind of alluded to this, that everyone has put their ego aside for the greater good of this mission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, and you know, baseball is about ego, man. <laughs> baseball yeah. players uh, have the biggest ego. I think. Oh, any. Any uh, professional that has egos, you know, but like I said, it comes to a point that everything ends, you know what I mean? Everything ends. And with all the knowledge you have and and seeing how baseball is changing, um, and I feel like I talk, like, and a lot of our, our point of view in the game is not respected so much because everything is metrics and computerized and all that stuff, then... Being a part of an organization that actually value old school baseball, old school uh, mindset, and um, and again, just be able to give what I learned in my twenty plus years playing this game to a kid to never been a part of a team or never been able to wear a, a cleat or a, a, a professional glove. And being a part of it and seeing, like, like let's turn it back. I don't know if you paid attention to all these rookies we invited. The expression on their face, man, is like, like, like even you guys capturing on 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 video or posting it. I don't think people with like fans can, put, like, really like put themselves there and for these guys the way. They were watching, like Cano hit BP or Didi hit BP or Simmons catch ground ball or me throwing a bullpen. Like these kids was like first day at kindergarten and so excited, and they was like just soaking all the information, soaking the environment, and it's like I say, that's that's if if not other players got that feeling, what I feel like chills bomb like. Like really helping kids live in the dream, man. It's like they need don't need to be part of this because that's way special for everything we did in our career. Jair, I could not agree with you more. Being yeah. over there and watching that exact thing, it you no camera can capture no, the man. feeling that was on that field of those prospects <laughs> watching these all stars. Like I remember watching one of them, um, Andrelton Simmons was teaching mm -hmm. one of them how to basically play shortstop mm -hmm. and it's just like you can't capture that nope. on camera you can't capture what mm -hmm. that means the impact nope. on a camera it was mm -hmm. truly beautiful and it, honestly it was one of the things that inspired me to continue to pursue being a part of this organization because it yeah, was uh, truly one of the most beautiful things i've seen uh, on or off a baseball field yes man that's why like that's why i say like keep repeating myself that's why baseball united is so special man it's like not even baseball in United only, it's just international tournaments. Like it opens door to to a lifestyle or to a new thing that these kids have never thought they're gonna see. The kid from Uganda never left Uganda before till that time. And the first trip was to Dubai. Like <laughs> you imagine that your first trip out of your country is to Dubai, man. It's like if you don't get chills while I'm hearing this kind of story. And I keep getting messages from him. It's like, like it keep. He's so respectful. He keep um, saying thank you. 
Um, and he he works hard. He posts videos. It's like, like, like again, that feeling of him being so grateful for everything. It's just like me signing for the first time. You know what I mean? But for us, it was easy. For him, like, hearing his story, man, like, we're doing something special. And that's the main thing of this game. Keep giving kids chances to represent the country, put the country on the map, and change lifestyle for them. Absolutely. Jair, how do you envision the future of this league over the next, let's say, decade? Oof. Man, like, if I need to, like, what I'm picturing that happen, um, it's, it's, it's going to take baseball world for Storm. Um, we're going to be able to bring a lot of even Major League Baseball game over there. Um, it's gonna, you know, I know, I don't know if you're ever gonna be able to play in, in the summer because it's so hot. Um, mm -hmm. but you never know if, if the Royal family gets behind this league and they want to make a stadium with like, with roof or, I don't know, but I know that we're gonna make a lot of major league teams happy because we're going to be in a, in a region that, that they're going to feel a little bit comfortable letting the guys go play or send guys who was hurt during the year. Oh, because it's not that long yet. We're going to send it there. Then it's going to be more promotion for us. It's going to be um, another league that major league can trust to send this prospect. And when prospect come media, when media comes more attention, and with that, baseball United you know, is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you never know the possibility of baseball United is like is right now is limited, man. It's like it's it's it, it can be something super special, and especially see how they um, Saudi Arabia um, grow their own soccer league. Man, it's, 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 if we can get some government push and help, it, this, this is going to be special. Jair, how, I'm not sure that a lot of the listeners truly understand. How yeah. important is it, especially in that part of the world, to yeah. have a government partnership in order to do this? Yeah, nothing happened without them. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I think you heard some in Dubai, how many stuff that, Cash, John, the whole Baseball United office operation needed to do just to get the field ready for us to play. We fly dirt from India to be <laughs> able to make the mound, man. It's like we did some a lot of special stuff. Everything was shipped from United States to Dubai. So the, some of the guys, you know, the Indian guys, they not have shoes. We got a ship from United States to Dubai. It's like, you know, this is like if you don't have support from them, it's gonna be the job's gonna be way way harder than it's supposed to be. The job is harder already, but if with them supporting us, it's gonna be even. It's a smooth because you gotta get all this approval, like you gotta get all the the rules in place, all the the permission in place. It's like, it's, it's so many stuff you got to go through there to, we, we went through to have two, only two games. Imagine to have a, a, a season, how many real things you need to do. <laughs> it's unbelievable the amount of hoops that you need to jump through yeah, and the man. amount of red tape, so to speak, that you, yeah. has to be in place 100%. and everything. It really is truly remarkable what that's our why, ownership group is doing. That's why, like, whatever, like, everything that John... And and Cash and Barry and Swish, can know Eddie. Like I like I don't want to miss anybody. The whole group, like the operation the group is doing, and like uh, people don't understand that man. Like people like they a lot of guys. These guys change their lifestyle to move to Dubai to make sure this operation is like 
still working, still putting stuff out there to stay irrelevant for people to say, oh, Baseball United just was like like a, a joke. No, there's people really change their whole lifestyle to make sure this become a success story. And without them, like this would not be possible. And f for people to understand, it's not easy. The government over there is not this government over here. You know what I mean? Everything got to be at what they say. At the time they say it, um, they give you this window. And if you don't get done, things done in this window, you're not going to have a, su a success story. Aside from what we're actually doing here at the league, simply getting these meetings, Jair, is incredible to me. I've never seen anything like it. I couldn't let <laughs> anyone over here can't just call up the president of the United nope. States and say, hey, I need a meeting. No, nope. that's essentially what's going on here in another yep. part of the world with our ownership yep. group. It's crazy. Yep. It's crazy. Like they, they are meeting leaders that, that like control a lot of stuff in this world. And sitting at the, I, I can't imagine what John and Cash go to sitting at the table with this guy trying to pitch this. Oh, we want to bring baseball to your country, you know, uh, whatever they're doing is special. And we all at Baseball United are grateful for it because they're making a lot of dreams come true. Jair, let's switch gears a little bit mm. now. I want to talk a little bit about baseball in Curacao. How would mm. you describe the current state of baseball there? Oh, man, it's, it's blooming. It's blooming. It's blooming. Um, an ex-teammate of mine, a national team ex-teammate of mine, um, he fit, like, he retired from professional career, and he opened his own academy back home, and he's producing. He's helping He's helping the future of baseball of Curacao a lot. Um, last couple, last year, I think uh, this year he had uh, five of the most expensive players coming out there. He just got an, another kid um, agreement with a with a professional team. Then um, um, baseball in Curacao is getting exciting. Um, there's a lot of guys. A lot of ex-professionals like opening um, the baseball school to help this kid, and like I say, the same guy that uh, is having these kids sign was one of my one of uh, one of my um, you could say uh, one of the guys who really helped me out. Um, his name is Randy DeCaster. Um, when I signed at 16, I was able to drive back home. You got to be 18. Then mm -hmm. um, he used to pick me up. Man, the first couple of years he picked me up every day to make sure I get to the field, and uh, that's why I always grateful for him um, because he's one of the, like I said, one of the positive person who was in my corner when I was beginning my dream, and now he's um, helping making more dreams come true in Curacao, and um, uh, definitely, definitely he's doing a, re a really good job, and I think. We're going to be seeing a lot of, a lot of um, big leaders from Curse coming out now. My next question for you, Jair, you kind of touched on it. It was going mm. to be, are there a lot of academies and um, like baseball schools in Curacao? Mm. Similar to, I know MLB teams mm. have a lot of academies in the Dominican yeah. Republic, Puerto yeah. Rico. How does it compare in Curacao? Uh, the, the difference is, these kids don't sleep over in the, in, in the dorms. They go back to mom and daddy, you know, mm -hmm. um, they still got to go to school. Like, um, Dutch rules in Curacao, you got to attend to school. You got to attend. Um, um, you can't skip a day. Um, even with these kids, um, trying to go to being part of the, a prospect tournament or showcase, there's a lot of things, um, they needed the uh, Randall need to do to get permission from school from the government for the kid to be able to miss school days. You know what I mean? They gotta have a, a letter signed by the organization that inviting them. A letter from the mom invited from him. It just the thing we deal with back home is school. We don't have. It's hard to combine school and sport back home because we don't get that time and a lot of our stadium back home don't have lights then the practice like you go to school from 8 30 
some kids get done by 1, 30, 2, 10. And you go home, then practice start at 3 o'clock. You know what I mean? Some kids, mom and dad are working. They got to get uh, a public transportation. You know? Then when you get to the field, you get two hours, two hours to three hours of light, sunlight. Then you got to try to put everything through the three hours for you to get improvement. You know what I mean? Um, I remember my own days. I used to pass out in my in my books. You know what I mean? Is is because you you get home, you eat, and you change. You go to the stadium. You know what I mean to to get a work in, uh, and um, and it's not that easy as other, even here or in Dominica or Puerto Rico because you get a special time. You can dedicate to 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 the games. Everything is connected. You know they're like the school, come home, stadium, go home. It's like that's it. If you don't have uh, uh, anything out, baseball equipment at home, you're done for the day. You know, a lot of the other country, you can do a lot of baseball activity during the whole day. You know, Jair, in what ways do you think Baseball United could contribute to the growth of baseball in Curacao? Huh. Um. I think, I think like every country, if you see um, Puerto Rico, I know they got the uh, Carlos Bertran Academy. That is, it's a school, but you have your time to play baseball, go back to school. It's like, it's like a college, but not college. You know what I mean? You get your education, but you still put the work in, you know what I mean? And for, and, but it's, it's hard to do in Curacao because as you're talking about Dutch rules, Dutch rules are way different than other. And it, even base Curacao is producing a lot of baseball players. We still getting shadowed by soccer because we are Dutch Connolly. You know what I mean? Then, um, I know Didi did a, a, a great job of getting uh, a professional field back home. The, um, Didi is doing a really great job back home. Um, we just need to um, keep getting that opportunity from the government to uh, keep building facilities to make the game a little bit easier for the kids. And um, if Baseball United can, uh, I can help Baseball United sit out with the with the Curacao government and try to come with a project to give kids a, a, a chance to still get an education, but be more strict in baseball. Oh man, this is because um, the thing I tell everybody from age from age five to twelve that five to 12, uh, I want to say 14, 15, we can compete with the whole world, man. You know what I mean? But uh, after that, it's hard because we don't get that professional training. We don't get the, we don't have the professional in, um, facility. You know what I mean? That's where like, like, like I, I think, um, my own case, when I signed, I was waiting 131, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was waiting 131. I was skinny. You know what I mean? And the first thing in the off season, they say, like, uh, your diet is going to be like this. We want you to come in with 30 extra pounds on. You know what I mean? It's, 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 we are behind not talent-wise or skill-wise, just strength-wise. You know, we that's... Maybe it's changing. Um, now they're having all these um, guys studying and having a lot of ex-professionals back home. I think they're changing the culture. But for me, in the past, for us, it was always the strength. Not the ability to play the game, not the, not the IQ of the game, it's just the strength. Like, when we get to any league, our strengths is going to limit us for at least one to two years. 
Jair, you've brought up soccer a couple times during this show, mm. so I need to ask you, in mm. your opinion, mm. who is of professional baseball, Dutch professional baseball players, who is the mm. best soccer player? Ooh. Uh, Simmons is sneaky good. Simmons, Simmons is sneaky good. Didi is, is good, too. Um, Jonathan Scope um, is good, too. He has, some, he has his own team back home. Um, I think everybody comes from here, so knows how to kick the ball a little bit. Um, I was pretty good. I just was fast. I really didn't have a lot of dribble skills, but, um, and, uh, actually I didn't play so much either. My dad didn't let me do a lot of stuff. Um, but, um, I think, uh, if I need to choose right now, um, oh, Provar is pretty good too. Provar too, like Provar. Simmons, DD, um, Johnson Scope. I know Johnson Scope and, and Provar, they they do soccer for condition sometimes back home. Then, um, but skill wise on the ball, uh, from seeing what I saw a little bit, uh, I, I need to give it to Simmons right now. The reason I asked that, Jair, yeah. is because when we were in Dubai, we a couple of us asked Simmons that question. He yeah. said, Ask around, everyone will say me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the funny story is, man. When um when he was uh, uh before he went to Oklahoma Western Oklahoma, um they had a, there was a, like a college tryout right they came to get him on the, on the soccer pitch <laughs> he was on the soccer pitch <laughs> playing 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 soccer and he just went home and changed and went there then um, definitely Simmons Simmons for sure. What advice would you give to these young aspiring baseball players uh, from Curacao looking to follow in your footsteps, Shire? Um, the the number one thing is the, in this game is discipline, sacrifice, and nothing for me. What helped was um, staying in the moment. You know, don't don't get a don't get ahead. For the bonus you got, don't get ahead because the game changed a lot, man. The world changed a lot. Now you sign, you get all attention from a lot of people. You know, um, have great surrounding. Um, man, uh, I think my my key was having great people around me, going from my family. Um, other guys from Curacao, even in in all the minor leagues I play with, you know, they're always like, because I was always the young ones, they always had somebody looking out for me. You know what I mean? You got, you got to have people in your corner and to help you stay on the path. And like I tell everybody, your friends got to be a group of person that your dream become their dream. And... If it doesn't, they're going to put you in bad spots and you're going to get caught up with bad stuff. But if you have people around you, because I've got, everybody's going to make mistakes. But if you have one person around you is always going to try to help you, even tell you what you don't want to hear, um, it, it's, that's the person who's going to make sure you get to where you want to get to. It's all come to you, but you got to have surround yourself with people around you that support you and give you all the love and positive mindset that you need to because any I think any sports you get in for for a job gonna have the pressure, the stress, the failures, the up and down, the injuries. And if you don't have that group around you, man, like you can quit, you can destroy yourself. You know what I mean? This a lot of people don't understand. Making a sport your career, your livelihood, the way to make money comes with a lot of stuff. And uh, the kids, for the kids, I want to tell them, surround yourself with good people. You know, make sure that you put all the work to your dream. Even you don't think you see the dream coming through, don't give up. Don't give up because... Um, when you make your dream come true, man, it's something special. It's like you never get go back. You know what I mean?
Jair, what is, what message do you have for the fans in the Middle East and South Asia anxiously awaiting uh, these professional baseball games in this league? Um, we come in to put a good show. We gotta put a show. We gotta come bring the excitement. We 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 need your support to make this game bigger. We need your support to keep making dreams come true. And it just you guys can understand how beautiful of a game baseball can be. You know what I mean? It makes you cry, makes you happy, makes you stress. But the those type of things make this game so special. You know what I mean? Because you can have the best team on the field, but if you don't have the brotherhood like Baseball United have, the team's not gonna function. And that's that's I think that's the main thing we gotta show the world that um, baseball is a game of brotherhood. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean you gotta have this best style and it's just gonna have the twenty five, twenty six guys pushing for the same same goal and same same um achievements. And um like I say, we we want to replicate what we felt in Dubai this year again. And I wanna ask all the fans out there from my ministry, come support, see some some ex all star ex um um no ex some uh, future hall of famers um maybe some new new rookie sensation for the next couple of years in the big leagues you never know because uh, baseball can can show you guys some unique stories for sure Jair, I appreciate your perspective. I appreciate this conversation. Before I let you go, I have one last segment that I have been dying to talk to you about. This is not okay. necessarily about baseball. Okay. So my two favorite things on this planet are baseball and not a lot of people know this about me, reality TV. I know. <laughs> I saw yesterday when I was researching Come for on, this show. Man. <laughs> Come on, man! Oh, Lord! That so. Uh, you well, hold on, hold on. I didn't even give you this. This is the first, first baseball podcast or interview I ever did in my life. Somebody brought that reality show for forward, man. All right, let's go for it. Let's go for it. So, for those in the audience that don't know. <laughs> Jair was featured on a re reality TV series called WAGS Atlanta, which stands for Wives and Girlfriends of Sports Stars, featuring sports stars of Atlanta. So, mm -hmm. Jair, I binged this show yesterday before I came to interview you today. Uh -huh. <laughs> First of all, I have mm -hmm. to say, I absolutely loved every second of it. I couldn't get enough. So... <laughs> My question to you is, uh -huh. what motivated you to join that show? Oh, man. Um, I, think that it's, I have nothing to do with it, man. Um, it wasn't like a mix of some stuff, man. Um, Taiwan was not, not what I was expecting. Um, and um, I took my wife. Uh, I took my wife to Taiwan, man. And the apartment was really small. And the traveling and the food, she really didn't, well, she tried to be a good sport for me, but I know she was having a hard time. And actually, we were in Taiwan. She got the call. They uh, wanted to um, interview her first for the Real House of Atlanta. Then this one came up, the WAGs. And uh, we did it. We did it. Uh, we didn't hear anything after that. And the next year, I think um, she got. She actually got um, got the gig. She got the gig to be part of the show. And she actually asked me what I thought about. And you know, I told her like, if you can follow me around the world, and <laughs> Actually, eat what we ate in, in Taiwan and, uh, you know, 
being a good sport supported me to all of my career. You know, I can't say no. You know, that's the thing. I, I try. Like, it, I'm like this. I, nobody can tell me not to st- to stop playing baseball. You know, my wife, being a model, um, Miss uh, Miss Georgia, um, be part of Miss USA. Like, that's that's her life. You know what I mean? Then, uh, knowing that she comes from bad that background and knowing she wanted to be part of it. You know, it was an easy yes for me. You know what I mean? Then, um, like I said, if somebody supports you, you got to support them back. You know what I mean? That's what's one of their dreams to be part of it. And, you know, that's how it became us being part of the WAG series. So I'm curious, Jair, and I swear we'll let, we'll let you go <laughs> soon. But <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> What was it like for you having your personal life in the spotlight like that? And how did it differ from the media and the cameras and the attention from being an MLB player? Um, like people around me know, like there's two part of me, like JJ, the baseball player, Jair, like, and I don't know if you follow me, like I don't post a lot of stuff, man. Like I'm really mm-hmm. private. Like I love my privacy. Um, like I say, I go back to what my dad say, fame doesn't pay bills. You know what I mean? Then, um, I, I always got to the stick to the old school. Um, uh, I think when you play professional sport, like some people start to recognize you here and there, you lose a little bit of part of that privacy you want. You know, do you walk with a chip on your shoulder or make sure like you got to behave in a certain way for, because you never know who's going to be around you. You know, especially nowadays, and um, being being on TV or having people in my house, um, it was something like uh, I need to remind myself that um, the reason why I'm doing it, the reason why I was doing it, to give my my wife the the opportunity she wanted. You know what I mean? And uh, and when you put stuff in perspective, it helps you deal with what you need to deal with. And I, I, I try to be as professional as possible. You know what I mean? Um, the thing is, like, you got to know me. You, you, I think for a little bit, you know me that I, I, I don't like to fake. You know what I mean? I don't like to fake. I, uh, I, I, I can't act sad or happy or, or try to make... I, I, I'm just like... I, I'm a real man. I, I just... If I don't like something, I say it. If I like something, I say it. Um... And sometimes um, during the show, like, I needed to, like, stop, talk about stuff that I didn't want to repeat a lot. You know, but it's all about the viewers you can get. And and I know, like, what you need to do. But this is one thing, like, really, for me, I didn't like. You know what I mean? Because, like I say, I'm a private guy. But, again, for the person that supported me through my whole career, man, uh, I need to suck it up a little bit and do the best I can do. <laughs> Were these cameras in your house like close to 24 seven? Like I'm curious about the production side of it, uh, and how I often we, they were with you. We film like I need to be like, I needed to like schedule my, my workout around it. Um, sometimes they were like one time they, they didn't show it, but one time they actually wanted to see me work out. Oh, I didn't like that part. Because uh, like I was really trying to get my work in, and, and then we like, oh, we need to do the shot again. I didn't like this. It's like, woo, woo, man. Like, but um, I think we filmed uh, from the seven days four times, man. And then we talk about hours and hours, man. Like, if we you start at at twelve, they could be leaving my house at five o'clock, or we need to drive somewhere, dude. Like, did you know, did it? Like, I will come home. They, they will have a car parked in my garage, man. Like, I need to park outside for the production. <laughs> you know what I mean? The only thing I really like, they brought this chef lady that actually cooked a meal for me, for me one time. It was legit. But, like, like I say, for me being, like, really private, sometimes I wanted to come home. I just wanted to, like, chill. I was able to. I needed to, like, shower put suit on or dress on or a, a shirt on to like look like dude and like I said man you gotta do something you gotta do man you know what I mean 
But I'm I'm not. I, I hear I, you, I man. I I can't say like I didn't like it. It was a great experience. Like I met great guys, you know. So, um, you know, um, that's still in contact here and there with them. You know, what I mean, my wife is still in in, in contact, and um, actually, one of the the camera guys, so I'm really cool with him. Like we hearing the same message on Instagram. Then you know, it's just it, it was opportunity to open open another world. You know, what I mean, um. Um, I really don't like to talk a lot on camera if you saw it, you know what I mean? Um, but it, 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 it helps, you know what I mean? Especially now I'm transaction to, to the C, um, to a co-owner, you know, becoming like a, a coach, uh, you know, talking to young kids and I, it helps a little bit to, um, have that on, on the need of my belt and, um, here and there, like, you know, sometimes you gotta go out of your comfort zone. Because you never know where your future is in. Then you know, it was a great experience. Just the, sorry, oh, sorry. The timetable was a little bit too long for my liking. Jair, thank you so much for joining us here on the Anytime. Baseball United podcast. Thank you for Anytime. your insights. Thank you for your perspective. And I'm really looking forward to the next time I get to talk to you. Yeah, anytime, Liam. And by the way, again, man, good job. Thank you for all the help you're doing to keep. Um, putting Baseball United in the, in the spotlight and for everybody else who's part of this family. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I can't wait to make this uh, a success story. Keep bringing more content for our fans and for everybody in the Middle East. Thank you for supporting Baseball United. There's a lot of great stuff coming up to you guys. Thank you.